In the Quran, Allah talks about people who spend extravagantly and there are two words used for it. Uh, one of them is israf, and israf means to spend beyond the limit of what is necessary. So if you went to shopping and you went and bought a shirt, uh, and instead of buying one, you bought like 20 shirts, just because you can, that would be a form of israf. So israf is obviously a shirt is something beneficial, you can use it, you can wear those clothes, but if you go above and beyond what is necessary, that's called israf. And israf is looked down upon in the Quran. But there's another form of spending that's far worse, which Allah calls uh, tabdeer. And tabdeer is when you're spending on stuff that you don't actually need. To begin with, it's not even a fundamental need. So you're buying it for just absolutely vain purposes. There's really no significant necessity that is being met by something that is bought using tabdeer. Now, the words for tabdeer, you could just say spending extravagantly or spend, spending frivolously on frivolous things. The word Allah uses for that tabdeer, He describes it saying, "Inna al-mubadhirina kanu ikhwan shayatin." That the those who spend frivolously are declared brothers of shayatin, which seems kind of harsh. I mean, why just because I'm spending on, let's just say, a video game, or I'm spending a lot of money on a trip to Las Vegas or something for you know or another. Why should that be considered me as a brother of shayateen? You know, not just haram, don't do it or stay away from it, but I'm now made one of the allegiance of shayateen. Why in the world would Allah say that? There are lots of reasons for that, so let's walk ourselves through these ayat little by little and try to understand. First of all, رَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُوا بِمَا فِي نُفُوسِكُمْ إِن تَكُونُوا صَالِحِينَ First thing Allah says, your master knows what you have deep inside yourselves if in fact you do mean well, if you're good people. فَإِنَّهُ كَانَ لِلْأَوَّابِينَ غَفُورًا And for those people who keep coming back to Allah, He is extremely forgiving. In other words, Allah is saying, look, you're going to mess up and you're going to come back to Allah. You're going to mess up and you're going to come back to Allah. And that is something Allah expects. Allah doesn't expect you to be perfect and He knows what you have inside of you. That's the first thing. The second thing Allah says right after that in Surah Al-Isra is وَآتِي ذَا الْقُرْبَ حَقَّهُ وَالْمِسْكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ وَلَا تُبَذِّرْ تَبْذِيرًا Give the close one, the, the one that has closeness to you, which could be a relative, could be a family member, give to them what they deserve. أَتِي ذَا الْقُرْبَ حَقَّهُ And it's used in the singular, not ذَوِي الْقُرْبَ حُقُوقَهُمْ ذَا الْقُرْبَ حَقَّهُ Which means you have to think about every single relative and what they might deserve. Like you have to think of your relatives individually because of the ayah. Well, miskin, and then think of the one who is in a helpless situation. They're stuck financially. They're stuck because of their circumstance. Maybe they're sick and can't work. Something like that. That's a miskin. Wabna sabil, and someone who's on the road, meaning they're either you could consider them homeless, or they're in the middle of travel, or they're in transition. These kinds of people are called wabna sabil. So give pe these people what they deserve. In other words, when you're helping them, you're not giving charity to them. You're not doing them a favor. You're actually giving them what they deserve. And in the same ayah, he says, wala tu tabdira. And don't spend frivolously going out of your way and spending uh, uh, in tabdeer. Now what does that mean? That actually means by making it one ayah, Allah is first telling us that that money that you're spending recklessly, actually there were people who deserved it. So the first crime you're doing is you're depriving people that need and you're spending it somewhere else. Now when people need money and they don't have, they have they're desperate and they, you could have helped them but you didn't and there are millions of us who can help and millions of us start spending frivolously instead of helping others. And a culture of that is created. What happens on the one side? The people of need, they may resort to desperate means to try to make ends meet. So you can create crime in society because, you know, the lower income areas in any part of the world, you'll find more crime in those areas, right? So when their needs are not met, more and more people resort to crime. More and more young men become desperate and, and do, you know, uh, things they'll regret later on in their life and young women. So now you have a, crea uh, you know, this is, by the way, this is what shaitan wants. So in one sense, you've aided shaitan without even realizing on the one side where you've created this kind of evil in society by not taking care of those who need. But the other thing, just before I go on, is a balance. Allah says, وَلَا تُبَذِّرْ تَبْذِيرًا Don't go out of your way to spend frivolously. Allah didn't make us, let us become extreme either. In other words, Allah is not telling you, listen, you can never, ever, ever buy yourself something that you don't absolutely need. Like you go to the grocery store and you're like, hey, I want to get some flowers. Well, you don't need flowers technically, you can survive without them, but that's okay. Allah is saying, لَا by, by saying that, He's saying, you can sp you're always going to spend on some things that you don't absolutely need. That's okay, but don't make a habit out of it and don't go out of your way to do it. And don't do it in extreme cases where you're spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. In some cases, people spend millions of dollars on stupid things. Don't become one of those, because that's evil. Then the next ayah says, 
No doubt about it, those who engage in this kind of spending and look at the remarkable language, Allah does not say those who engaged in this act of spending. Al Mubadhirin is a noun, it's an ism fa'il. What nouns are, they're permanent. So people who are permanently in this state, they're always doing this kind of thing, they perpetually you know, spend in this way, they have been declared brothers of shaitan. Now that's, this is really interesting because in, in marketing, you learn about consumer society and you actually profile different kinds of consumers. So for instance, if there are people who have millions of dollars to spend and they are kind of bored by just spending money on a car or just spending money on a big screen TV or whatever, now they wanna, like what else can we spend money on? They get a little more creative with what they wanna spend money on. So you'll find them spending money on gambling, right? You'll spend, sp find them spending money on expensive wines, and they might even get involved in some kind of filthy, you know, their own kinds of clubs and this kind, this sort of thing. So they create an entire elite entertainment industry, right? That is catered to the needs of the very, very wealthy because they have disposable income and they've got money to spend on booze and they've got money to spend on gambling and they've got money to spend on whatever, prostitution, all kinds of filth. That industry could not have existed if the wealthy were not spending money on it. And the money has to keep coming in constantly, right? They have to be mubadhirin. They cannot do this one time because if, you, if the wealthy, which, which are a very small population of any society, do that kind of spending just one time, well, think of it from a business perspective. The, the, the person who's selling them these services, he can't survive if he has a customer that comes in once or twice. He needs a regular customer. So they actually become mubadhirin. They become people who spend frivolously, regularly. And thus they create and flourish the gambling industry and the alcohol industry and the prostitution industry, you name it. They create that entire environment, that entire scene, just by their frivolous spending. And this, you know, we're talking about millionaires and billionaires, but this comes down a little less than that too. If, you know, there are young people that are watching, you know, they're downloading some filthy, you know, video, movies or whatever online. They're like, oh, maybe I'm just harming myself. I'm not hurting anybody else. Well, actually, you're supporting an industry. They would not have made their money if you didn't download anything. You know, so if you're, and the tragedy, the tragedy of our times is a huge proportion of the filth downloaded online is from Muslim countries. You know, so that's, that's a reality. So Allah is saying, إِنَّ الْمُبَذِّرِينَ كَانُوا إِخْوَانَ الشَّيَاطِينَ Perhaps because some of the most evil enterprises that exist in our times and have always existed are supported on the backs of people that have disposable income and spend it irresponsibly. This is the point that's being made here. It's a very heavy point. You know, we talk about responsible consumerism and you have to spend money in places where, uh, you know, th that, are, that are clean, that you don't have, um, you know, uh, forced labor or child labor and things like that, or you go for, for organic food and things like that. Similarly, not just where this product was made, but what this product was made for. The thing you're buying, you have to look at why are you buying this product? Why are you engaged in this consumerism? Is there nothing better you can spend it on? So this beautiful balance between two, this is what I want to conclude with. On the one hand, the balance of, look, sometimes you are going to spend beyond your need, and that's okay. But on the other hand, if you become mubadhirin, you're going to create, you're going to become brothers of the shayateen because you know you are brothers in that you are giving them business and they are giving you entertainment. You become brothers and partners in a sense. You know you're supporting one another, and that's exactly what shaitan wants. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect us from becoming brothers of shayateen, and may Allah not make us from those who are mubadhirin nor from those who commit israf.